All right, welcome back to the big board, all that sort of good stuff. We're looking at the Hill of Death, Champion Hill. It's a tiny battles box game. They don't do many of these games, but when they do, they're usually interesting. And of course, this is a Herman Lutman design, and it's, uh, you know, I'll be frank with you, it's another riff on the Shattered Swords system. Uh, if you're familiar with Herman Lutman's uh, ACW titles, he's gone through this, well, it used to be called Blind Swords, right? And uh, this is, I guess, another another riff on uh, on that system using many of the same mechanics and the same movement rules and the same combat rules, so some tweaks here and there, but now leveraging cards to get various divisions and corps and uh, commanders in to business into activation right <clears throat> still got the event cards still got the fog of war card still got the same uh, counter details and all that sort of good stuff so uh, same dice based uh, 2d6 combat resolution etc etc here's what's a little bit different about uh, this particular Module, I believe it's uh, perhaps generically more approachable, I would say. It's aimed at, as the box says, from nine years old to adult. Uh, we've got a nice big, uh, like this fold-out chart. There's a high-quality, full-color, very readable, <laughs> right? Uh, those that experience the uh, most, fearful, or most fearful sacrifice were... A little bit disappointed with the size of the charts in there. The fonts were tiny, but uh, that was quickly rectified. Now we've got this big, beautiful thing that we can see everything. Uh, it's also got uh, a player aid on the back that's quite detailed, all step by step. So even a dumbass like me can work it out. Very nice. I just noticed that there. This is not a shrink rip, by the way. It's more of a how we're about to get started type of thing. Uh, the rule book, though, I thought it was interesting that the series rule book. And gosh, I gotta say, look, I, I really, I really uh, find this cover quite striking. Simple and evocative, interesting color choices, and the theme is carried through with the series rule book here. Uh, the rule book clocks in all up 15 pages of pretty large font, uh, well bullet pointed with explanations etc nice and then there's a scenario booklet so you can see it's quite a quite a robust package uh, in that we're looking at here uh, this uh, that this has 11 pages uh, well it's really it's even less because there's these big big diagrams oh, almost not the counters that would have been that would have sucked uh, and there's this big last image here on the back so it's not really that many pages Interestingly enough, uh, and it might be a fiddly thing for some folks, but when each game turn, the mix of activation cards is going to be different. And anyway, uh, I had to pause the camera there for a second, so I'm back. But uh, I was discussing how the cards are different every turn uh, there's a as as more reinforcements arrive obviously you're putting more cards in but then there's also some adjustments to the number and type of cards that may go into a given hand for a given turn so we've now got our scenario set up and we've got all the cards ready to go and this is the shorter of the two scenarios. There's a full, I think it's 14 turn scenario. And then, then this is a six turn scenario, which really just deals with the meat of the combat around Champion Hill and the village of Champion. Now here's the other cool thing that I, I picked up on in reading is you can run with the historical or standard uh, Victory conditions, so there will be, you know, uh, four VPs for the hill, one for Cook's farm, one for the wherever the wheat fields are and stuff like that. Or you can place random markers and there'll be different uh, VPs based on 
each location as you randomly place those down, which I thought was a nice little uh, touch to add a little bit of replay value when you don't really know what's going on, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll get started on this. The objective is gonna be for the Union to close in on two flanks. They're gonna be bringing uh, reinforcements in primarily from the north up here and the you, the uh, confederates are bringing stuff in from the south they enter on this uh this row here uh this is the uh, gameplay edge uh, we have a significant sort of section of the map here that we're not going to be using uh, so there's obviously some more uh, choices in gameplay to be experienced based on based on playing the larger scenario right so so we'll uh, <clears throat> we'll get into it. Uh, I would say from a from a aesthetics standpoint, the box is in, is excellent. I like the box art. The cards are nice and thick. The counters are the tiny battles counters, and they are what they are. These are the larger. You know, these are one, uh, I think these are one inch size, and or five eighths, whatever, whatever they are. And let me just see. It's on the back of the box. I'm really terrible with guessing the size of counters. Uh, does it say? No, it doesn't. Never mind. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but w w the one thing you are going to have with these is the well, these are thicker and nicer than the typical smaller half inch or regular size counters from uh, Tiny Battles. They they are just a little thin. And not a complaint. More an observation. They are easy punch. I mean, the, these guys will pop out very, very easily out of the, the, box, the bag. Uh, and in fact, out of the sprue. And in fact, they come in a bag so they don't splay all over the, uh, the, the deal. The rule books are great. Uh, very well laid out. Nice sized format, uh, formatting uh, for the rule book. And the map, look, this map art is really nice. Uh, it's not in the Rick, it's, it's kind of pseudo Rick Barberish, right? But Rick tend to use a lot more greens and this has a lot more yellows going on. And I know it's probably a little difficult to tell just because of the lighting and the shadow and stuff like that. But uh, it, it's very appealing, laid out with the counters on it. My only quibble would be with the counter art, uh, which I like the icons and all that sort of good stuff. They're all, uh, all pretty nifty. Uh, we, there are two, the cores are denoted by, uh, let's see if I can get this up in here. So you'll see that LR there. Come on, LP, LR, whatever it is, LR. I'm trying to see it through the, through the camera, LR. That's the core that that unit is attached to. And there are multiple cores and they all have their little uh, color coding. But the divisional bars, the color bars across the top here, some of those colors are repeated. And it would have been nice, if I can just get this to focus, sorry about that. It would have been nice if we could have had just different colors for each, each division. So like there are two divisions, I believe. Well, I, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Now I'm thinking I'm wrong. I could have sworn. Yeah, here we go. So look, there's here's two two different divisions from two different cores, and they've both got a blue bar. Now it's easy enough to pick up because it's got the different colored circle. But it would be nice just to split those up and make them all unique colors, right? There's lots of colors in the rainbow. Last time I checked, so that would have been nice. Now I'm trying to think what else. Uh, if you're if you're familiar with this game, it the plays super fast. Uh, it's easy to grok, and this. Um, this chart to run through combat and uh, uh, cohesion tests and uh, your weapon ranges and all this sort of good stuff. Super convenient, super easy to use. I really like it. Uh, that will aid gameplay a lot. And in fact, I'm gonna need to check it, compare it to some of the other games in the series, make sure it's the same. But uh, I would just use this going forward if I could. Uh, I don't know if I can, but uh, I might. I might be able to. All right. Turn one coming up. Talk to you soon.